Thanks, and, and I'll, I'll keep this pretty short. Um, it's some of what I would have told you was in the introduction there, but uh, for those of you not familiar with West Liberty, it's about 12 miles east of Iowa City. You just head out on Highway 6 and, and you're there. Um, census says we have about 400 people. I, I know, uh, you can just look at our utility billing and, and number of people, I, I know that's wrong. Um, we have a much higher population than that. We're trying very hard to get counted this year uh, to reflect that. Um, I think a, a few things, you know, in, in our community um, that are, are, are fairly unique, um, we're not a community that has had just this recent influx of immigrants. Um, we have basically, West Liberty Foods is the meat processor in town currently. <laughs> Uh, originally, it started out as, as Lewis Bridges' first meat processing plant. Uh, in the 40s, they didn't have enough workers, and uh, their solution to that was to get a bunch of buses, take them down to the Texas-Mexico border, and load people up, uh, and brought them back to the West Liberty area uh, to work in the meat processing plant. Uh, we do have families that are on their fifth generation now uh, that come from from Mexico, um, and uh, while the population there is still primarily Mexican, uh, that's, that's certainly the largest group. Uh, the uh, list of countries that Mark had up on there for, for sort of Latino population, um, you know, I could probably take off people in our community that would fit all those countries. Um, you know, it's not just Mexican, but certainly that, that is the, the largest part. Um, I would also say, you know, in, in terms of, of that that population, while it did start out revolving around the meat processing industry, uh, as it would stand currently, most of the standard population in town is not working at the meat processing plant. Uh, most of them have their own businesses, or they're working at banks, uh, or the, the medical center. Uh, I mean, they're working through and, and fairly well, at least on, on, the, on the job front, fairly well integrated into the community. Uh, we have a fairly short three block downtown and drive down that half the businesses are just going to go. Uh, so, you know, we're a little unique in that we do have this long-standing Hispanic population that, that has kind of built itself into the, into the community. Um, we still have a very uh, strong inflow of first generation and recent immigrants, um, primarily because uh, there's a certain comfort level. Uh, when I talk to folks who come in there initially, uh, you know, over, you know, a good portion of the population already speaks Spanish. Uh, so when they come there, they're not sort of stuck, isolated. Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know, the, the Mexican groceries. Uh, you know, they can find foods that you know they're not going to find probably at Walmart, although uh, Walmart and these certainly have, have reacted to, to demographic changes and changed up in the South. But we continue to get that, that inflow, but uh, I think in terms of the, the community, um, while there certainly are the, the 20% that Mark talked about, you know, I hear from them occasionally as mayor, you know, what are you going to do about, you know, this loud music, or what are you going to do about this or that? Um, they're certainly there. Um, I think overall as a community, we've done a pretty good job uh, of uh, cooperating with the Hispanic population in the community. And trying to get that, you know, probably the hardest part has been, uh, there, there's always sort of traditionally been dual roles. Uh, you don't see a lot of the, sort of the traditional power structure in City Hall, uh, a lot of the Hispanic population running for, for office. Um, uh, or, you know, if they have a problem, just thinking directly, oh, we're going to have a City Hall and make a complaint. Um, there's much more sort of an informal network that goes on. Um, I've seen that kind of been break, breaking down over time. Um, I, I, we recently got a public health grant last year and uh, 
one of the things that, as a city, we tried to make an effort to do was to, to broaden who shows up to these focus groups. And uh, it was a bit of an eye-opening experience when we said, you know, look, traditionally, the Hispanic population hasn't attended these things. What can we do to change that? And started talking to a few of the people that, that I would consider sort of informal leaders in the Hispanic community. And, you know, the answer was, you need to just go out and personally invite them. You need to go knock on their door and talk to them and say, you know, you're welcome to this. We want you at this. And you know, we tried it. Lo and behold, uh, we, we had a, a bunch of community members uh, from the Hispanic community that had never been involved in that sort of organized, uh, uh, sort of governmental focus group type environment. So, uh, you know, we're working. We're, like I said, we're, we're an interesting mix uh, of relatively established uh, Hispanic families along with newcomers. Uh, so hopefully that gives you a little perspective about what our community is like. Uh, and help with any questions and I'll let it go with that.